In this video, we're gonna solve a couple of Excel questions that came up into a job interview. And the interesting fact thing is everything starts here from a data set. So we need basically to make some adjustments here in the data set in order to be possible to solve all these questions that we have here in this Excel test. So click in the link in the description down below, download the file and then come here for me because we're gonna solve all these questions step by step, one by one with this radical example. So I hope you guys, this video can help you out in a job interview or even in a Excel test that you need to solve. Okay, so let's start here with the first step that is to adjust the data set in order to make sure we can solve all the questions. The first thing that we have here in this spreadsheet, this she 01 for example, is this message right here. Adjust the data set so that you can solve the, quest the challenges, the questions. So in order to solve all the questions, we need to make some adjustments here. But before we start to make the adjustments here in the data set, let's take a look here in the challenge because that way maybe you can have an idea on what can we do into our report. So the first thing you have here in the challenge is this red text that says, use functions to solve the tasks. Only functions are allowed. And in the first question we have, what is the total salary of everyone together? Okay, so I know how to solve this. Two, what is the total salary by position? Okay. Third one, what is the average salary by store? Okay. And the fourth one is, what is the largest salary and the smallest one? And what is the names of the respective employees? Okay, so now I know how to do it. And now I have a clear idea on how can I adjust here this report in order to solve all these questions. Let's start here, make a simple adjustment. That is the column size adjustment. So look here, I have many columns, column A with the name, the employee ID, the position, the salary and the location. So it's basically maybe a sales report or something like this. Here I have uh, the first problem that I have here in this report. The column B is not uh, that large enough to display all the text that I have within the cells in the column B because as you guys can see here, let's say this employee ID here is larger than the actual size of the column B. That way I cannot see the complete text that I have here within the column B. That way one thing that we can do here and uh, before the same applies here for the column E, for example, the store all tree dash New York. See that this text is too large or the size of the column E. To make sure we can solve this problem, I can click in the A name, so A, B, C, D, E, okay, so I just drag to the right, and then in between one column and another, I can just double click it, one, two, to make sure automatically resize the columns, and we're done with this first part of the adjustment, let's say the way. Another thing that we can do here is, let's say the salary. I know that a salary is a currency, so maybe we can use here the dollar sign to just display, to show that is a salary, that is a currency. Here we actually have values, just numbers, but maybe it's a good idea to put it in a currency format. So let me just select here the entire column D, and then I can click in Home, and then I can click here, and then select the English, United States currency formatting, for example. We're done with this column. Another thing that is important here, if you pay attention, we have here the location. And within the location, we have the store and then the city, New York, Los Angeles, and so on, so on. But here we have a problem because if you take a look here in the challenge, in the question number three, for example, the salary, I need you to, to, to have the salary by store. So here I have all the stores, the store 001, 2, 3, and 4. But if you pay attention here, this the store 001, 2, 3, and 4 does not match with I have here in all the cells. Because here, instead of having just only the store 003, 001, for example, I also have here the city name. So maybe it's a good idea to just divide this column into two. One with the, let's say, store 101, 02, 03, 04, for example. So just the store name and another one with the city names, for example. But we don't need to actually use a column, a specific column with the specific city's name. Because we will not use the city's name here into our challenges. There's no questions here asking about the city. So uh, one thing that we can do here is just split the store. So I'm going to use here the column F to just type it in, let's say store name, for example, enter. I can just click here in between the column F and column G, click hold and drag to the right to make sure I can increase a little bit the size of the column F. Now, one thing that I can do, I don't need the city's name. 
but I need to split the text. I'm gonna start here, type it in the first store that I have. Store 003, enter. And in here in the cell just underneath, I can press the short key, Control E, Control E, because that way we can activate here the flash view in Excel. And don't worry, because if the, short, uh, the shortcut Control E does not work into your Excel, maybe you can click here, Data, and then you can click Data Tools. Here you have the flash view, okay? I just press Control E, the shortcut, because here in my Excel, it's telling me the Control E is equal to the flash view. But instead of you using the Control E, you can, of course, just click here in the flash view. It's gonna do the same thing for you. Now I have here a specific column, column F, with the store's names. Now we can come back here to the challenge and let's start solving all these questions that we have. One, two, three, and the fourth one, okay? I'm gonna start here with the first one that is, what is the total salary of a level one together? I can add it up all the values that make up basically the salary column. So I can add it up this value right here with this one, with this one, with this one, and so on, so on, so on. I can do it through a formula, but I cannot use a formula because I can only use functions. What is a formula basically? How, what is the formula that I can use here? Equal sign, and then I can back here to the sheet 001, and then I can select the first salary, add or the plus sign to another one, plus another one, plus another one, and so on, so on. But instead of using a formula, maybe it's a good idea to use a function that is called equal sign, some function, okay? I can double click here, one, two, and then the only thing that I need to do is select the entire range, or to be more specific, select the entire column that make up my salary column. So I'm gonna just, I just need to click here in the D, the D letter, okay? D, and then I can press enter, and then we're done. We got here the correct result, $10 million. This is the, the total, this is the, all the values added up together, okay? So this is the total salary of everyone together, 10 million. Now the question number two, the second question is, what is the total salary by position? To solve this second question, maybe we can use the sum function, but just think about it, if we, we use the sum function, the sum function is gonna add up all the values in the range that we're gonna select. Maybe it's not works that well because I don't want your sum to add up all the values in the range. I just want to add up the values that match with the position. So analyst, assistant, CEO, and so on, so on. So I cannot, in this particular question, I cannot sum, add it up, I cannot add up all these values in this salary column because I need to match with this criteria here, the position. So if I want to, let's say the supervisor here, I just want this salary of the supervisor. So I cannot add up all the values, but just the values that match with the supervisor criteria. That I, This is my criteria that I need to use. And if we have here a criteria, a condition, instead of using the equal sign, the sum function, we can use the sum if function. Sum if my criteria are met, for example. So I can double click here in the sum if, one, two, and then I can the first thing select my criteria range. My criteria range is gonna be the, the columns where I have the positions. So I can come back here to the sheet one, one and then I can select here the entire column C because indeed column C is where I have the positions. And then comma, let me just click here in this formula bar. Now I can see that the sum if function is asking me the, about the criteria. Okay, my first criteria is here in the challenge sheet and then I can select here the analyst, this cell right here and then comma. And as you guys can follow along here, the formula bar, now we need to select the sum range. What is the range? What is the column that I want to add it up if my criteria are met, for example? I need to select the entire column D where I have the salary. And then I can press enter. And here we got. So instead of using the sum function that uh, would return for me the 10 million result, here we got the $800,000. Now to make sure we can do it for all the rows, I can just click here in the down right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down. That way we're done. Okay, so we just done here with, what is the total salary by position? We're done. We have here the salary that's match, that corresponds with our criteria. And to do it, we're just using the summary function. Now the, the third question is, what is the average salary by store? Maybe it's similar with the question that we just did before. But here, instead of adding up the values, we need to take the average. Maybe Excel have an average function, but instead of using equal sign average function, maybe it's a good idea to use the if, average if 
function because here we have a criteria, we have a condition. Average if my criteria are met. So let me just double click here in the average if, one, two, two, select. And the first thing that we need to select, the first thing that I every G if function is asking me is what is my criteria range? My criteria range is going to be the range that where I have the stores. So look, this is what it was important to just split into another column, the store name, because now we're going to use it. So the range is going to be is here in the she 01 and here the column F comma. And the second thing that the average if is asking me is the criteria. My first criteria is going to be, let's say, the store 001 comma. And now let's take a look here in the formula bar. The average if function is asking me what is my average range. So the range that I'm going to use here to do the average is going to be the salary column. So we're going to select the entire salary column and then press enter. Let's check it out if it's correct. Oh yeah. So the average salary for the store 001 is equal to $62,000. Now we can just click here in the down right corner of the cell, click and hold the drag and down to make sure all the rows here contain the same function. And we're done guys with the question number three. Now it's time to do the question number four, the biggest question that we have here. And this fourth question is asking us, what is the largest salary and the smallest one? And what are the names of the respective employees? So let's start here with the first part of this question that is, what is the largest salary and what is the smallest one? To solve this problem, Excel have a function here that is called max. So equal sign max. This function right here return the largest value in a set of values. So let's say you select the entire column where you have the salary. You can take back as result the largest value that you have in the column that you just selected. So let's just double click here in the max function, one, two. And then I can select here the she 01. And then I can select the entire column D. So I can click here and then I can press enter. And we're done. We're basically done with the largest salary. And then after it, we can take here the name. But before we do the name, let's do here the smallest salary. I can use here the equal sign. And in our opposite way to the max function, we have a mean function that returns the smallest value in a set of values that you select. So I can just double click here, one, two. And then in the same way that we just did the max function, I can click here in the she 01 and select the entire column D. And then I can press enter. So we're done, guys. The first part of the question, of the, the fourth question is done. Now we can move on here for the second and last part. That is, what is the name of each one of these two employees that we have here? The interesting fact in here is that we can use a lot of functions to solve this specific question. We can use, let's say, the VLOOKUP function, the XLOOKUP, maybe the HLOOKUP, and of course, we can use the index match function. Here in this particular situation, we cannot use the VLOOKUP function. But why? Why cannot we cannot use the VLOOKUP function? Because our reference column, let's say the way, is the salary column. And the salary column is to the right of the result that we want to bring it back. And the VLOOKUP function doesn't work in the way because the VLOOKUP function is going to work. So let's say we're going to use the, the column D as criteria. The VLOOKUP function is going to assert and bring it back as result any value, any column that you have to the right of our criteria. But in this situation here, the result that we want is to the left of the, the column that we are using as criteria. That way, the VLOOKUP function is not going to work here. So we need to change the function. We can use the XLOOKUP or index match function. And don't worry, because if your Excel version does not have, let's say, the XLOOKUP function, you can use the index match function. So we're going to show you here how can you use first the XLOOKUP function, and then I can show you how can you use the index match function. Let's start here with the XLOOKUP function that is equal to XLOOKUP function, and then double click here. The XLOOKUP function is a easy function to use. The first thing, the lookup value. The lookup value here is going to be the salary that I have here, and then comma. My lookup array is the column that I want you to just, just find, just look up for the salary. So it's the column D, and then comma again. Now if I click here in the formula bar, I can see the third criteria, that is the return array. So whenever I just find the salary in the column D, I want you to take back as result the column A. So this is my return array. And then close parentheses and then press enter. And here we got, uh, so Scott have the largest salary. Another way we can do it 
if you don't have the, the xlookup function into your Excel, we can use the equal sign, the index match function. And the index match function is a little bit more complicated to use, but I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. I'm going to double click here in the index function, one, two. Now, the first thing that we need to do is just to select the column that we're going to use as result. Look, I not select the column that I need to use as criteria, but the column that I'm going to use as result, the column that I want to bring it back as result. This is the first thing that I need to select here within the index column, the index function. Okay, so, so let me just click here in the shield 01, and I'm going to select the entire column A. I'm going to click here in the formula bar, and then comma. Now, for the row number, I cannot type in anything here because the row number is the number of the, the row that I want to bring back as result. But I don't want, I, I don't know what is the row number that I want to bring back as result because the lowest salary can be, let's say, the, the row number two, number three, number four, number five, and so on, so on. So I don't know what is the, the row number that I need to use here. That way, I need to make it dynamic. So I'm going to use here another function, a function within the index function. And this function is called match. So match function. And then I'm going to double click here. The match function is going to be responsible to tell the index function what is the number of the row that the index function needs to use to bring back the result. And in the match function, the first thing that the match function is asking me is the lookup value. And here in this question, the lookup value is here in the challenge sheet. And it's going to be the salary right here, okay? And then comma. We can follow along with this formula bar right here. My lookup array now is going to be the column with the salary, that is this, the column D, and then a comma. Now we need to select here three options. One, less than, zero, exact match, or negative one that is greater than. In this case, here in this scenario, I'm going to use this option right here, zero, exact match, because I want you to just bring it back as result. The exactly employee that we have, the salary that we are looking for, okay? So exact match. One, two, and then I can close parentheses one more time and then press enter. So here we got, guys, the, the same result as before, squat. That way we know it's correct, okay? The same result in the XLOOKUP function and here in the index match function. Now, one thing that we can do here is just click here in this all right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down, and we're done. So we just complete all these four different questions here in Excel. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below because it can help you out. And I see you tomorrow as everybody has a new video. I see you there.